everyone welcome to online bible club again this week my name's liz and i'm here today to tell you something more from god's word the bible and we should be looking at that later on but first do you know when it's your birthday birthdays are always really special and really good fun and recently in my house somebody had a birthday why do we like our birthdays though what's such good fun about them well people often like to send you cards and that's really good. Perhaps I'll make them or they'll just buy one and send it to you. And often people will give us a present. I wonder what's inside here. But that means that somebody has thought about us. And we always like it when someone remembers our birthday or thinks about us. Have you got any special times that you can remember for your birthday? Often it's about meeting together with our family and friends and we haven't been able to do that much this last year, but we hope and pray that this year we will be able to meet up soon with our family. Now, I remember one of my birthdays. It was a really special time. It was when I was five years old, so it was a long time ago, but let me tell you about it. My cousin came to visit and she came all the way from America with the rest of her family. And because she hadn't visited us before, Everybody in our family was really excited, especially when they all found out that we both had the same birthday and my cousin was staying with us for her birthday. And so we had lots and lots of times when we met up with our families and we had birthday cakes made for us. Now, wonder how many birthday cakes you think we had made for us that we could share with our family and friends. It wasn't one, it wasn't two, nor even three or four. But yes, we had five cakes and they were big cakes that we could share with our family and friends. And that's something that I've always remembered because it was such a special time. Now, our story today is about a meal and Jesus said it was something that was so important he wanted us all to remember it. So let's go to Tammy first and have our song. It's our Easter song. Do you remember what a mighty, mighty saviour you are? I hope you remember it from last week and we're going to learn the first verse this week as well. So I'll see you after singing. See you later. Everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Online Bible Club, Stowe Market Baptist Church. I'm Tammy and if you remember last week we started learning a really great new song called Mighty Mighty Saviour. So if you remember the, ver the chorus it goes like this, what a mighty mighty saviour you are, what a mighty mighty saviour you are, you can wash away my sin, you can change my heart within, what a mighty mighty saviour you are. Shall we give that a go so you can remember the chorus? Here we go. Did you remember it? Right, so now we're going to go and we're going to learn the first verse and then we're going to do the chorus together. So the first verse is, no, no one is good, no one is holy before God, I need someone to cleanse me, no one is pure, no one is righteous in your sight, I need someone to save me. I'm so glad you died and rose again for helpless sinners like me. Let me go to the chorus again. What a mighty, mighty saviour. So should we give that a go? Here we go. <laughs> No one is good. 
No, no one is holy before God. I need someone to cleanse me. No one is pure. No one is righteous in your sight. I need someone to save me. So we're going to do the verse and the chorus again. So I'm just going to find the right place on the video player. Oh, gone too far. Right, let's give this another go. No one is good. No one is holy before God. I need someone to cleanse me. No one is pure, no one is righteous in your sight, I need someone to save me. next week when we're going to learn, learn verse one and the chorus and then the week after we're going to put the whole thing together and do it all at once. I think you've done really well. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye! Do you remember the story from last week when Lindsay told us about how Jesus asked Peter and John to go off to the village? They had to find a man who was carrying a pot of water on his head and follow him and they would be led to a room where they were going to prepare the lovely feast. So here's another picture I've got here of the room. And this is when all the disciples, or 12 of them, came together and Jesus would have been there. The feast that Peter and John had to prepare was called the Passover feast. Now, this is a feast that the Jews, Jesus's people, would have celebrated every year, just like every year you celebrate your birthday. But what was the Passover feast about? Why did they celebrate it? Well, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible. The second book is called Exodus, which means escape. And this is when Jesus's people were slaves a long time ago. They lived at that time in Egypt. And they were cruelly treated by the Egyptians. But the reason why they were slaves was because they hadn't remembered God. Do you remember John told us about the commandments? The first commandment is God first. And the second commandment is no idols. We're not to worship anything apart from God. But God's people had forgotten him. How awful is that? And so they became slaves and had to work really hard. But they became aware that they'd forgotten God. And they went to God and they said, God, we're sorry that we forgot you. We're sorry that we've worshipped idols. Please forgive us. And please rescue us from this land where we're slaves. 
and let us go home so we can worship you in our own land. And God heard that prayer and God sent Moses and Aaron to talk to Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh is the king of Egypt and he thought he was really important and he was a very powerful man. Moses and Aaron were told by God to say, let my people go. So Moses spoke to Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go. But do you know what Pharaoh said? It was terrible. He said, who is God? Who is God that I should listen to him or that I should do what he says? Now, I pray that none of us would ever say that because we know that God is the almighty God, the one who made us. And the reason why we have to listen to him and do what he said is because he knows best. So God sent 10 plagues on the land of Egypt. And if you've never heard this story, you can always read the beginning of Exodus where it talks about it. I've got a picture of a couple of the, of the plagues. Now, the, all the water in the whole land turned into something that nobody could drink one day. And hey, look at this one. Can you see this book? Now, at the bottom, there are lots and lots of frogs. Here is Pharaoh, and here is Moses and Aaron. And Moses is and Pharaoh is really, really cross, even in his palace. These plague of frogs came and there was lots of other plagues. But Moses said the last plague, the 10th plague, was going to be the worst one. Overnight, the angel of death would come over every house in the land. And in every house, the oldest person, the firstborn person would die. Now, don't you think that's really awful? But listen, we haven't listened to all that God said, and that's really important. We must listen to God. We listen to everything he said. God said, if you take a lamb and the lamb is killed, look what you had to do. You could take the lamb's blood. And now there's a picture here. And you had to take the blood and paint it around the door frame of your house. Can you see this man here? He's got the some little twigs and he's spreading the blood all around the house. There's his wife inside and can you see what the wife is holding? It's her child and she's really worried. She wants her child to be kept safe. And so they're doing what God has said. And that night they will stay inside. But do you think Pharaoh listened to God? Pharaoh did not listen to God. And that night when the angel of death came over, there was much crying in Egypt because lots of people hadn't listened to God. But God's people did listen. Now you might say, well, that was really sad. Why did the lamb have to die? The lamb died so that this little boy here and lots of others like him in Egypt didn't have to die. And we will talk about that again later. So this Passover, when the angel of death passed over this house, it was remembered every year. Just like we remember your birthday and we look back and say thank you to God for looking after us. And so God's people were supposed to look back and say thank you to God. For keeping them safe. So Peter and John are going to prepare this feast. Let's have a look and see what food they had to bring. First of all they would have cooked the lamb and they would have eaten the lamb. They also had something like this, some lettuce or some green and vegetables to eat with it. And they also had to eat something like this, which is herbs. Now, herbs are plants that grow and they make the food taste really nice. Now, these are dried herbs, but the herbs they had to eat were bitter herbs. 
I don't like eating bitter food. Oh, that makes my teeth go on edge and makes me feel really unwell. But the bitterness of the food, of the herbs, was to remind them of how horrible it was being a slave. Because it was so long ago that people had forgotten and they had to remember what life was really like. There was two more things that they had to eat at the feast. This is unleavened bread. So normally your bread is nice and soft and squishy and you can make a nice sandwich. But this bread wasn't made with yeast and so it hasn't risen and it's quite hard. So it's a bit like a pita bread, but that was the sort of bread they ate. And they also had wine to drink, okay? And so Jesus and his disciples, they celebrated the Passover. They ate all these things together. Now, at this point, at the end of the meal, one of the disciples is leaving the door. Now, you are going to find out from Karen next week exactly who that disciple is and why he left. But Jesus, at the end of the meal, he moved some of the things away. He didn't want to look at those foods anymore and they'd eaten plenty but he just left two things the bread and the wine and then jesus spoke to them he said this is the last passover i will share with you because tomorrow i am going to die do we remember how jesus died yes it was on the cross do you remember and Jesus said, tomorrow I will die on the cross. But I want you to remember me. I want you never, ever to forget me. So when people become Christians, when they love the Lord and they meet in a church, often they will take some bread and some wine or juice and they will remember Jesus and how he died. So Jesus said, this is my body. And Jesus' body was given or broken for us. Because Jesus died and was and suffered, we don't have to die or suffer. And then the wine. So what does this remind you of? It looks a lot like blood, doesn't it? And Jesus gave his life for us. So that if we trust in Jesus, we don't have to die forever and ever in hell. So, just like that lamb, because that lamb died, then that child didn't have to die. So Jesus said, I am going to die. And if you trust in me, you don't have to die. Now, it's not always easy to remember Jesus with these bread and wine because we haven't been able to meet together very easily this year. But we can remember Jesus every day by reading something from his word, the Bible, and by praying together. And that will help us every day to think about Jesus and remember him. You don't like it when somebody forgets you, do you? I certainly don't. And Jesus said, remember me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put our hands together and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you want us to remember you. And Lord, you are such a wonderful person that we do want to think about you. We want to read your word. We want to pray to you every day and we want to learn more about you. But we thank you that Jesus did die on the cross. He did give his body to be broken. And he did give his life for his people. And if we say we're sorry for our sins, we thank you that we can be forgiven and we can be your children. Help each one of us to know that in our hearts and to trust you today, we pray. Help us this week in all we do and look after us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, next week, we're going to hear the next part of the Easter story, and I hope you can join us. Bye-bye.